Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Uh, let's talk about systems of equations and solving them. Um, before we actually get into how to find the solutions, let's first define what a system of equations is. A uh, system of equations is a collection of two, which is what we're going to deal with mostly, is two equations, but it could be more than that, with the same set of unknowns. So in other words, all the equations have the same solutions. All right, so let's talk about finding the solutions. There's really two things to remember here. Now, in this first um, bullet point right there, this actually is not a system of equations, but it's a good point right now to set up how to find solutions of equations, whether it's a system or not. When there's one graph on the coordinate axis, the solution or solutions are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if you're looking at a graph and there's one parabola, one quadratic function, one exponential function, a linear function, whatever it is, if there's one graph on the coordinate axis, the solutions or the roots, the zeros, are where the graph crosses the x-axis. When there is more than one graph on the coordinate axis, then the solutions are where the graphs cross each other. Okay, so that's really important. So if you have one graph on a coordinate axis, the solutions are where the graph crosses the x-axis. If you have more than one graph, and that could be multiple parabolas or quadratic equations, um, could be multiple lines, and whatever that is, if you have more than one graph, wherever they cross, that's, um, that's the solutions to those equations. All right, so here's example number one. So if you look on your notes, you can see example number one there. And you can see um, this, the equation for this graph is y equals x squared minus 9. All right, so if I want to find the solutions, there's one graph on the coordinate axis. So I'm going to find where the graph crosses the x-axis. There's a solution, and there's a solution, which in this case it turns out to be at negative 3 and positive 3. It's the x-coordinate where y equals 0, where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right, same thing here in number two, except instead of having a quadratic function, I have a linear function. So the equation for this line is y equals uh, 4x plus 8, and it's where y equals 0. So basically, if you replace y with 0, what's the x value need to be in order to make that equation work? And that, in this case, it's going to be negative 2. So the solution is right there at negative 2. Now, this is different. Example number three is different. I see two graphs on that coordinate axis. I see y equals x squared minus 4. That's going to be that parabola, that quadratic function. And then I see y equals x plus 5. That's the linear function. And I'm going to look for where the graph crosses each other because there's more than one graph on the coordinate axis. So when I find the solutions here, they are actually right there and right there. Now, I don't know exactly what those coordinates are, but it's going to be something like negative 2, so for this solution right there, something like negative 2, 3, um, or something like that. I don't know if that's exactly what the solutions are. Same thing up here on this coordinate. I need an x and a y coordinate. So it could be something like 3, 8, or something to that effect. So instead of just being a number, in other words, where the, it's the x-coordinate where the graph crosses the x-axis, it's, it's going to be a coordinate, an x and y coordinate, like you're used to seeing like 2, 7, or something to that effect. All right, lastly, with example number 4, you see I have two linear functions here, y equals x minus 4 and y equals negative 2x plus 1. There's more than one graph on the coordinate axis, so the solutions to this system um, are going to be where the graphs cross each other. In this case, they only cross once. It's going to be right there, and it looks at something like negative 2 and then negative, or I'm sorry, positive 2 and negative 2 or negative 2.5 or something like that. So one solution here is where the graphs cross each other.